Hi everybody, welcome back to my channel. My name's Joni Young, if you're new here, and I'm an acrylic artist and instructor. Today I'm going to be showing you all step-by-step -step how to paint this portrait. We're just going to keep this really, really simple. Today I'm just working on a 9x12 canvas. Keep in mind you can paint this on any size canvas you like, a little bit smaller even, or larger. So I'm going to go over the colors I'm going to be using for this painting first and the brush that I'm going to be working on the background with. This is my number 30 Filbert brush. I like that it's got that kind of round end to it. It helps me create round, soft uh, brush strokes, which I'll be needing for the background. And I'm going to be starting the background with my light blue violet. Um, then I'm going to be coming in with a little bit of white. This is titanium white, but you can use any blue or white that you want. Um, the colors for the skin and the dress I'm going to be using are Neon Orange, Neon Yellow Warm, um, Purple Violet, and I've also got some Burnt Sienna. So these are all the colors that I'm going to be using today. No black. And I'm going to show you guys how to mix to make skin tones and the color of her hair using a few different brushes and some really interesting tips and tricks that I've taught myself over the past 25 plus years so enjoy this video. You're going to learn a lot today and let's just jump in. I'm so excited to show you guys how to do this. So I'm going to start with getting my brush a little bit wet. Getting it a little bit wet really helps release the paint and help you blend that paint around. So I'm going to start just with this blue violet and I chose this color because it's very complementary to the uh, warm yellow and the orange we're going to be using. So what I want to do is just apply that paint starting around the edges of the canvas and we're going to create uh, an ombre dark to light coming into the center that's going to really draw our eye in to the figure here in the center which of course is our focal point now if you guys uh, really enjoy learning how to paint figures and portraits i've got a whole playlist so uh, i'll leave a link below for that playlist for you So I'm just going to keep going around like this, creating an oval. Okay, the next color, white, without washing my brush off. I'm going to begin where I left off with that blue, slightly going over it, just to really get rid of any harsh lines and make it look like it's just seamlessly blending in and fading into the center and each of those colors. Keep in mind, if you're just learning how to work in acrylics, acrylics dry a little bit darker. Um, so if you really want your highlights to show up, you're gonna need to remember that and you'll just learn over time. Uh, practicing with acrylics will uh, really get you used to how they work, how they dry and uh, therefore, how much white you need to add for uh, your highlights. So I'm just going to keep going inside. It's getting tighter now and smaller so I can just continuously twirl my brush around like this. Use a little bit more white as we get right in here in the center. I don't know how much of this we're going to be covering up with our figure, but I'm not thinking about that at this point. I'm just concentrating on blending this in and creating this uh, beautiful ombre. Um, one of my favorite colors is this blue violet. I find that it looks uh, really nice with almost every single color. Uh, it's a, a great one. And this one's um, by Liquitex Basics Acrylics, if you're curious. I'm just going to come in and add a little bit more uh, blue around the side here. I'm going to be using an angle or angular brush, also known as a dagger brush. This is a number 10. If I had one a little bit smaller than this, I might use that as well. Um, but this actually is going to be okay because her dress is coming out past the canvas and it's going to be the her dress is really kind of pulling and, and what's going to be drawing us in and it feels like it's just coming right out in the foreground. Um, and then I'm going to also be using uh, filbert brush. This one is a small one. So the first brush that I used was the larger filbert, right? I've got uh, quite a few different sizes of these brushes. They're great must-have brushes. And speaking of must-have brushes, I've got a full 
tutorial, step-by-step, -step, how to use all my top recommended must-have favorite brushes. So I'll leave a link down below for that. Um, they're nice to use for painting figures because they've got that nice kind of crescent moon, half circle, round end to them. It makes it really easy to blend as well and create round like shoulders, head, and all those female feminine curves. So I'll be using this one and this one is, <laughs> you can barely see it anymore, but it's at number two. Anything a little bit bigger or smaller will work as well. And I'll also be using round brush. This one I can get in and if I need to add a little bit more tighter details or uh, shadows and outlines, then I can use this. This one's a number two as well. So we've got our, again, number 10 angle brush, number two filbert, and number two round. If I happen to add any other brushes along the way, I'll be sure to mention it, of course, and look below this video for a full list of all the colors and brushes I'm using, plus links to Patreon, Facebook, Instagram, Pinterest, and uh, other tutorials I think you guys might enjoy and find helpful. I'm gonna start with my small filbert brush. So we know that she's gonna be sort of off centered her body's going to be off centered so we're not going to put her shoulders and uh, torso here we're going to begin it over here however her dress will pull off to the left hand side and placing her off center whoops just have a little bit of paint on my brush now placing her off center like that is really going to help to create more of a dramatic look to this painting and make it more interesting. So things like that, little things like that, can make a big difference in your painting. So that's another little tip for you guys right there. And I'm going to just start by mixing up the first color. So what I want to use is my Burnt Sienna and a little bit of my purple violet or dioxazine purple works well. These are also going to be complementary to the blue, but these will make for a nice dark color without having to use any black. And I like to use color uh, instead of black whenever I can for my darkest shadows and for contrast. So I'm going to start uh, right, I'm going to add her head right about, we're just going to jump into this guys. So just think of shapes right now. So I'm going to do a little circle like this and she's got hair blowing in the wind. So don't worry about making it perfectly, uh, symmetrical or circular. Okay. And then her ear is going to come out just a little. So see how I'm just coming from the edge here and pulling down a little, a little line like that. And then pull down about a half an inch to even a quarter of an inch. I'm gonna come down here a little, so straight line there. Then we're gonna go a little diagonal like that. And then down a little bit more diagonal and then round to her shoulder. Take a little bit more paint here. We're going to bring her first half of her arm, her elbows right here, and the rest of her arm is going to be kind of tucked in here and hidden. But we're going to bring her arm down about an inch, inch and a half maybe. And then we're going to add a little, we've already got the startings of a little triangle here. So let's just, a very skinny triangle. Let's just make that more of a triangle by doing that. Then it pulls in to where her waist will be. And then here we're going to come down. Now her hair is going to be flying over here 
And now it's going to be over this shoulder too, so I'm not going to take as much time going over that. Her other arm is going to slightly go in, just slightly. And then, so you want to line up if her elbow's here on this side, her elbow's going to be right about here, but this arm is going, is just hanging down. We'll add a little bit more to it after because her dress does kind of wrap around. I'm just going to get a little bit of water on my brush to prevent the paint from drying my brush out and ruining it. Also, it's going to help me to blend my paint out. So I'll come in here again. Remember, slightly, just a slight diagonal pull in towards her back and then it's going to slightly go out a little bit. I'm going to add a little bit of just the purple now because it does get quite dark in here and I'll probably be adding uh, another layer or two. It depends on how it dries. Acrylic in general does dry darker. I mentioned that quite a bit because it kind of freaks people out if they don't know and they think their colors and their shadows and everything are right while it's wet and then they come and look at it the next day and they're like, what happened? Why does my painting look black? <laughs> and it's it's something that happens. So, And I don't hear a lot of um, artists talking about that in their videos. So I like to, to let you guys know so you're not, you know, so that you're prepared and you can uh, understand how acrylic works and prevent that from happening. So I'll be coming in with a little bit of a highlight and a glow around the edge there on this shoulder and this arm down here specifically, but I'm going to come in now and just paint in her back. So I'm going to take those colors again. Now I know it's going to dry really dark, so I'll be adding a little bit of white in here too. And her dress is, of course, kind of falling off or she's draped in a beautiful cloth fabric, satiny gold. So we'll just bring this down in a V and it meets down in the center here. Okay, I'm going to take some white now, a little bit of my yellow and all those colors again, a little bit of purple, burnt sienna, and I'll start adding the next layer. So using a little bit of white now is really going to help to create that soft, creamy um, look of skin. And I'm just going right inside. You can leave the outside. Um, I'm going to make her elbow come just a little bit wider at the bottom there. So it's kind of coming down into a point, but a little bit rounded. And a V, well, I guess you can make like a V. We'll say that just helps so much when you call uh, things shapes and think of them as shapes when you're painting them. Really, really helps. Okay, and I'll come around now. Coming in on the edge here with my light. Starting to build up to that. I'll be using a little bit more white after. We know her hair is going to be covering this part, but I do just want to continue. How are you guys doing so far? I hope you guys are following along okay and that you're finding this relaxing and easy to follow along. I'm going to come just up the edge here. And just a little bit behind her ear there. 
Now, what I want to mention is that there's going to be a bit of a lighter area down here as it gets closer to her cloth and lighter here. She's got a little dip in her spine and the arch of her back right here. So I'm going to be adding uh, both highlights and a little bit of a shadow. You want to do this very uh, slowly, carefully, ease into those shadows. So a little bit of burnt sienna, white and purple. Less white that, that, than we've added previously. So it's going to start right here, her mid back, right there. And I'm just going to apply very skinny, go kind of like, and it's also turning and curving in here. So it's almost going to be like a crescent shape, not as curvy like a C. Okay, and then I'm going to just soften. I'll wash all that paint on my brush, dry it off. And I'm just going to lightly soften, soften. Now my brush doesn't have a whole lot of water on it. It's important to know it's just damp and it's not dripping. Okay, you're going to have a big mess on your hands if you have too much water in your brush. Make that a little bit darker little bit arched towards her waist right in here and then up and then in here we're also going to be a bit darker in here like I mentioned earlier with her the shadow of her arm. This is going to curve this way, so we're going to start in slightly diagonal and then curve out. Shadow here, starting of her, of her hair. And then the inside of this arm, and again I'm just using my burnt sienna and my purple violet. So we want to just kind of eyeball this where this line comes up here. We'll have the same thing here, but it's going to come out this way. So this way and then this way. So think of a V, okay? When you're applying the angle, it'll be the opposite. Okay, we're going to come right down right down, around, and then over. I'll be a bit more generous with my purple because I want this to dry really dark right inside here. And here as well. And then this area here we're going to be covering up the base there. So I'm not worried about what that looks like right now. All I'm worried about is making it dark right in here. So just bring this down into a V with your purple and burnt sienna. Okay, I'm going to just kind of come over with the rest of that paint on my brush. And I'm going to begin a shape here. So her round head and then it's going to come in wisp here, but then I'm going to use uh, my round brush with a pointy tip for creating some separate hairs that are just kind of flying. I can do a few just with the end of this brush. So if you don't have a round brush, you can use, um, you can continue to use one like this. Just going to bring up her head a little bit here. Bring her hair up and just the height a little bit more. Okay. 
and then down around here I'm just going to start kind of wiggling so it'll be nice and dark once I come in with the the fabric or her dress okay, I'm gonna add some highlights now so I've washed and dried my brush off it's just a little bit damp and I'm gonna take my white with my yellow maybe even a little bit of that burnt sienna little touch of purple in there I'm going to come across the edge a little bit more white for this step so a little bit more white try to get it nice and flat on the tip of your brush and we'll bring a little little pull over come around where her elbow would be and then down I'm going to come in and scumble here where it's going to be a little bit lighter. Scumble right up close to where the fabric's going to be. I'm going to go in between those shadows. And just follow around. I'm going to mix up a little bit more color here. So whatever skin color you want yours to be, if you want it to be lighter, obviously just add a little bit more white and yellow. And of course, if you want it to be darker, then play up a little bit more. On, um, I'm going to kind of bring it in here a little bit more so we get that curve curve going in towards the left so just play up a little bit more on your add a little bit more burnt sienna or purple if you want yours to be a little bit darker your skin tone I'm gonna take my shadow colors again and just come in here add a little bit more Just accentuating this shadow a little bit more. A little bit more purple here, just off the edge. We're gonna go underneath right underneath her elbow and just along the outside. So what I'm going to do is load my brush up on the tip so you can kind of just wiggle and just kind of slide and pull in so you get a little bit of paint on the tip of your brush. And curl that in. Have a part of her hair, the wind's blowing, and it's just making it go in all different directions. Taking a little bit of burnt sienna and purple again on my brush. So this way having dark first, our dark underpainting and layer first, we'll have all those shadows. And then our highlights are able to stand out. So we'll be coming in with our highlights. Okay, 
Okay, I'm just gonna come right down in here and gradually add a little bit more shadow just where that fabric's gonna be. And then a little bit where her hair's coming out, there's gonna be a little bit of a shadow in there as well. And right here by her shoulder. Okay, I'm just gonna softly blend this in. Okay, I think I'm ready to start working on um, her, the fabric now. I'll be adding the highlights to her hair after. And now I'm gonna be switching over to my angle brush because I can come in here, which I'll just get it a little bit wet first. That brings the bristles tighter together. I can come in here and then pull and wrap, right? You can get that, the nice folds and the movement and get the feel for which direction that fabric's pulling in. So I'm gonna be doing this uh, just with a little bit of white and that beautiful yellow warm. I want to make sure that I've got enough white in here so that the color holds up and doesn't turn green from um, being a bit too transparent. So these neon colors are transparent. So when they dry, you're going to see a different color because it's going to combine whatever color that's underneath, if that makes sense. Like when you're putting on um, sunglasses that have a, a filtered lens to them, so it changes, it alters the color. So I want the color to stay this beautiful gold color, so that's why I add a little bit of white to it. That'll break the transparency and make it opaque. Okay, so what I want to do is come, I just want to really make sure that my bristles are nice and tight together, and I can take advantage of um, the nice narrow point to the tip of this brush. So I'm going to come in and just start wiggling. The fabric is right in there in the front, coming around. Right off the canvas. I need a little bit of water on my brush, a little bit more white. Use more white right here where it wraps around. It comes in around her arm is going down in the fabric there. Okay, and I'm gonna take my yellow. And I'm gonna push gently as I'm wiggling. I'm gonna go wiggle and pull. A little bit of water to help loosen that paint up. You want to bring that fabric in here and make it kind of bunched and gathered. Get a feel for those folds and wiggles. Okay, then right, right below her arm, it's going to start from the other side. So we'll wiggle and then bring this down, push flat, wiggle and scoop it around. Come down straight and pull. Bring it up just a little bit wider there. And then straight down.
I'm gonna take a little bit of my neon orange, a little bit of blue, and I'm gonna make some shadows. This also makes some really nice skin color as well, skin tones. I'm just kind of coming in here and creating some lines on an angle for our folds. Okay, I'm gonna cut in to both the blue and the orange. That starts to curve up in here. Starts to just turn and gather up. Right up close to where it ripples against her waist and lower back. Okay, just washed my brush out. It's important to do that every once in a while so that the paint doesn't end up drying up high in your brush and ruining it. Okay, I'm going to come right next to where it's really bright white here and wrapped around her arm. And I'm going to start coming in with some folds and gathering on this side. Now you don't have to do them exactly where I'm doing them. As long as you have a few dark and light uh, lines and areas, just some light and shadow, you can make it up. That's all you need. Okay, I'm gonna take more of my yellow now, a little bit of orange in there. But aren't these colors beautiful with that uh, violet blue violet background. It's a great combo. I like using this for um, landscapes too, especially winter ones. Fall, I think I did a few fall like, uh, like this, similar colors. We'll come in along the side here and just go over. So scoop, 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 and lines. And then it's kind of just twirling and scumbling around in that area. And then back to lines over here. Go back into my white and my yellow. A little bit of water on there, just a little bit. And we'll come in and start adding where we want our bright highlights to be. A little bit at a time like this. So if we've got our shadows in there and that fold Wherever it folds and goes in, we're going to have the shadow. Where the fold is sticking out is where that light is going to be hitting it. And that's how you know. It's helpful to know where your highlights are and your shadows and why they're there, right? going to catch the edge here and go right off the canvas. Okay, 
it's here where it's kind of just all there's no like real folds in it it's kind of just crinkly that's all you need to do it's just little patches like that okay i'm gonna add some water water down my yellow with just a tiny bit of orange in there and I'm going to be coming right in here again, playing up on the color here, here, and we can start being a little bit more generous with that yellow and that, or the saturation. A little bit of patchiness in here. And then back to the folds. I even like a little bit of that blue peeking through. I think it's quite nice. I'm going to cut in. Cut in and get it on the very edge of my brush here. And I'll add a few lines. Take my purple, go down the edge of her arm, pull it that way again, and then right down here. I'm going to turn my brush over so the pointy, long angle end of it kind of goes down here and it's a little bit. A little bit wiggly looking and we're getting some round shapes there around the fabric just kind of just gonna outline a little bit here for that fabric a little bit more I'm going to go and use switch over to my number two round brush and I'm going to take that yellow and go right around. So I just want it to look like her arms in that fabric. I'm going to create a little point like that and use a little bit more white to really set it off. Make it stand out. And here for our brightest highlights, a little bit more white. Again, making it look kind of bunched and kind of crinkly right in this section here. So just a little bit white. Wiggle, turn your brush. Pick up a little bit of yellow warm now, right in here, starts to wrap around and then it comes out. Go into my orange, haven't washed my brush off, I've got a hint of white and yellow in there. Adding some water to thin that paint out. So it's going to be a little bit more transparent. And we'll just add some light, a few more light areas here. Look how pretty that is. Got that peach color with the yellow warm. Some coolness going on, cool tones, temperatures, and warm. We're going to work on her hair a little bit more now, adding some highlights. Here's the luminous uh, yellow or neon yellow warm that I'm using. It's by Holbein. So I'm going to use my 
And you can use liner brushes too. I've even demonstrated how to use uh, rake fan brushes for creating hair, but I'm gonna keep this simple today because I know a lot of you guys don't have those brushes. So I'm just gonna use a little round brush and demonstrate. So I'll take a little bit of white with my yellow warm. Well, let's even take a little bit of burnt sienna in there. So we get kind of some gradual mid-tones in there. And I'm just gonna start from the top and we're gonna just go from the top down towards the center. So lines, lines, lines. You wanna leave some, obviously you wanna leave some dark showing through, right? You can bring it out a little bit past where we added the dark beginning stages of her hair. This will give us that filtered sunlit look around on the edge. Okay, then I'm gonna go in, twist my brush, Get a little bit here on the tip and I'm going to very lightly start wisping around over top now. Start to add a little bit more white. Very light, light pressure. Okay, with a little bit more white. Like I mentioned, I'm gonna come up higher so we get some filtered sunlight through her hair. Then a little bit more into the brown or burnt sienna. Actually, I'm gonna add a little, I need a little bit more shadow in there so I'm gonna quickly just start from behind her ear here. In with that purple, very thin, curve in, and you can make her hair as short or long as you want. Okay, back over to my yellow, white. I'm going to continue adding some more layers in here, bringing it around. Now I find for myself, when I do it quicker, I create kind of like a little rhythm and I'm not thinking about it as much. I think about the direction I want it, her hair to go in. And then I just do it really quickly, multiple brush strokes, and it ends up looking a lot more natural and it's a, it's a little bit more, yeah, just more free flowing and natural looking when you do this. So your painting will feel looser and more carefree and that's how we want her hair to feel, right? She's just kind of having a moment of clarity, I would say. That's what I'm getting from this. And kind of just feeling empowered, wrapped up in this, and looking out. You can also kind of go in the opposite direction and start from the bottom and layer little curls like this. And I'm going to take my purple and my burnt sienna, a little bit of both with some water. You can use any size liner that you want. I find this is just going to be a little bit easier for me to 
get in and add where I really want my shadows and contrast and little fine lines. Okay, I'll just reload my brush there. And I'm going to again start from just behind her ear, pull. I'm going to be a little bit looser with the rest of her hair blowing in the wind here. Water down my brush a bit. That's really going to help. And just try to imagine me standing there and feeling that breeze. And it's kind of just pulling. I can feel my hair just blowing. And then I'll come in and add a few highlights on top of those. Less water and more paint this time. I'm going to create some filtered golden highlights in the sunlight. So I'll make some of these areas of her hair a little bit thicker hair. And I'm just going to soften gently with my finger. Okay, now I'm going to come in and add with my filbert brush, my number two, my yellow for another layer. So wherever I added the white, now it's going to be a really, really bright, bright, glowing gold. And because this is kind of going to create a filter over those areas, I can add a little bit of water to help that paint flow. I'm going to take a little bit of white, kind of dry brush, very thin amount here, and just kind of soften a little bit of her hair, a few areas here. I want it to feel a little bit softer. Final shadows, brown, purple, burnt sienna. Work that paint out of my brush so it's pretty dry. You can even dry it off or wipe the excess off on a towel. I'm just going to add a few little hints. See how pretty that is? Just these little finishing touches. Sometimes are the secret to Beautiful painting. Just 
just a little hint of that blue, blue, purple, burnt sienna, but you can see it's mostly just a bit of that blue and it gives everything kind of a, a soft, hazy, kind of a glow to it. Last highlight add here on the outer edge of our arm and just a little bit a little bit on that side as well I'm gonna bring up her shoulder just a little bit here a little bit slouched it's like really easy to do, you know, after you've finished your painting and you look at it and like I have here and I think, you know what, I'm just going to bring her, her arm up a little bit higher. You can just very simply come up and add that a little bit of those dark colors. Then just smooth it out with a little bit of my yellow and white kind of a dry brush I'll gently come in here and bring it all together but it is a little bit darker right here anyway so I'm going to just kind of lightly tap over that And yeah, I think that I'm finished with this painting. I'm going to call this done. I loved working on this and I hope you guys enjoyed watching. I'm saying I'm done as I'm adding just a little bit more into the folds here of the purple and burnt sienna. Um, but yeah, just making it really, really light, light empowered, strong and strong and soft female. Uh, vibe to this painting. I hope you guys uh, get what I'm trying to portray here. I hope that I was able to explain it in a relaxing, uh, easy to follow along step-by-step -step tutorial for you. Um, I love to inspire, motivate, and get as many people out there painting as creating as I can. That's my goal. I feel like art has just helped me so much in my life and it's been really healing for me as well as uh, students of mine over the years, people that have suffered strokes, depression, uh, ADD, autism, you name it. Art brings us together. It, it grounds you. And I could go on and on, but I just want to mention that because I think that's really important. That's part of uh, why I decided to make a YouTube channel because I know I can reach much more people uh, globally. So thanks again so much, everybody. Please subscribe to my channel. It helps to get more people out there seeing. So the more people that are subscribed, commenting, sharing the videos, uh, really helps. So have a wonderful day and I'll see you guys all soon in another video. Bye!